Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Bryce. I'm with Susquehanna Valley High School here in Conco, New York. There's my email address. We're doing Unit 12, Lesson 1. Now please bear with me. There's a probability that I'm going to get something wrong during this whole unit. Oh, wait. Introduction to probability. <laughs> Common Core Algebra 2 Non-Regions class. If you don't understand what I'm saying, go ahead and scan that QR code and you'll see the genius who made these worksheets explain everything to you. So, Mathematics always tries to pin things down. We like numerical answers, and that includes the probability of something occurring. So the terminology with probability is very important. We do some basic terms here. Experiment. Some process that occurs within a well-defined outcome. We have to know what the outcomes are. With a scientific experiment, you might not know what the outcome is, but you have a hypothesis about it. With a mathematical experiment, we know what the outcomes are going to be. What is an outcome? A result from a single trial. So I roll the dice and a five comes out. That's an outcome. An event is a collection of one or more outcomes. So not rolling dice, but if I have a die or a spinner, or a deck of cards, or um, a grade scale, okay? All of those, when I'm looking for an event, it's a collection of one or more outcomes. So I might be looking for all the odd numbers. I might be looking for everything that's blue, green, or red, the primary colors. So this is a collection. It's not uh, doing a sample space. Sample space, a collection of all the outcomes of an experiment. So this is what's really happening. And this might be a collection of what you were looking for. Often, when we're doing a probability experiment, we're looking for specific outcomes. We're looking for... Um, you know, a collection of events. We want some things to happen. We want other things not to happen. So that's what the event is, is a collection. And then we go ahead and run the experiment or we look in the world and see what the probability is that that's gonna happen. An experiment is run whereby a spinner is spun around a circle with five equal sectors. Very important to understand that there are five equal sectors that have been marked off as shown. What is the experiment? Let's go back to our vocabulary. Experiment, some process that occurs when the well-defined outcomes. What's the process? Spinning the spinner. Give one or more outcomes of the experiment. Um, a four. I don't know. I just randomly picked four. What's the probability of spinning the spinner and landing on an odd number? Okay, so what we can do is we can look at the odd numbers. There are three odd numbers. How many numbers are there? Two more. Three plus two is five. So three-fifths. We like fractions here. I also am going to emphasize do not simplify the fraction. Do not simplify. You're like, hey, three-fifths doesn't simplify. Yes, but a lot of times these fractions can simplify. I don't want them because I want to know how big the sample space is. Okay, what's the probability of spinner landing on an odd number? Three out of five. What's the event here? The event is one three, five, in braces, not in parentheses. What outcomes fall into the event? Okay, so this is supposed to be the outcomes, and the event is spinning. But um, again, a lot of times we're going to say um, E is uh, 1, 3, and 5, and the event is spinning. So those are interchangeable. Okay, so the probability is that I do make a little bit of a mistake here. 
Uh, the answer from C helps us to find some basic formula that dictates all probability calculations. The probability of an event is what I'm looking for divided by the whole sample space. Number of outcomes that fall into the event that I'm looking for, the number of outcomes that fall into the sample space. So this is what I'm looking for. And this is everything. That's why it's important to know uh, in experiment what uh, that all the events are, what everything can be. So given the above definition between what two numbers must all probabilities lie? Let me see what I want. Um, some of the times I might want, I want nothing. So that would be 0 over x, which is 0. And I want everything. Uh, so that would be x over x. Well, what's a number divided by itself as long as that number isn't 0? That's 1. So it's between 0 and 1. Now let's go on to the next page. When we deal with theoretical probability, that means experiments in our mind, we don't actually have to run the experiment to determine the probability of an event. We simply have to know the number of outcomes in the sample space and the number of outcomes that fall into our event that we're interested in. Let's take a look at a slightly more challenging scenario. Okay, so this is very, very common. A fair coin is flipped. Okay, um, as long as it's not a double-headed coin, all coins are fair. Fair coin is flipped three times. The result is noted each time. The sample space consists of ordered triples, such as heads, heads, tails, which would represent a head on the first toss, a head on the second toss, and tail on the third toss. Draw a tree diagram. Now I drew, I draw tree diagrams very specific. Okay. Toss one. It can be a heads or tails. Those are the only choices you have. Toss two. If you get a head on the first toss, you can get heads or tails on the second toss. If you get a tails on the first toss, you can get heads or tails. What about toss three? Does it matter the first time you got heads, second time you got heads? No, you can still get heads or tails because they're independent. Heads, tails. Heads, tails. They're independent. Heads, tails. That means it doesn't matter what happened before. They're independent. Doesn't matter what happens before. So you can get three tails in a row. It doesn't depend on the previous action for this action to happen. List all the outcomes in order triples. How many of them are there? Well, first of all, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight. So now let's list them. There's a very easy way to do this so you don't make any mistakes. You start at the bottom. Heads, heads, heads. That one's done. And then you start here. Tails, there's only one way to go. Heads, heads. So you list that. Tails, heads, heads. And then you mark it off. Heads, tails, heads. Okay, you can hit pause to copy those down. There are eight of them. Okay, and ask, what's the probability of finding all heads? Well, there's only one spot where they're all heads. So it is one out of eight. Exactly two heads. Okay, now there's a couple of spaces there where it has exactly two heads. This one does not have exactly two heads. It has more than two heads. This one has exactly two heads. That one has exactly two heads. Not enough. Yes, there's the third one. That's it. Three out of eight. All heads or all tails? Or all tails. There's all tails. There's all heads. So that is 
two out of eight. Now, what if I asked, what's the probability of getting two heads? Well, there are two heads, two heads, two heads, two heads. That's it. One, two, three, four. That's four out of eight instead of three out of eight, because that's the difference between exactly two heads, three out of eight, and two heads, which will be four out of eight, because even though there are three there, I still have at least two. Okay, sometimes we have to quantify chance by using observations that have been made in the real world. In this case, we're talking about empirical probability. Real world. That's what empirical probability is. The fundamental equation for probability still stands. Okay, that's part over whole. A survey was done by marketing company to determine which of the three sodas were preferred by people in a blind taste test. The results are shown below. Find the empirical probability that a person selected at random from this group would prefer soda B. Express your answer as a fraction, as a decimal accurate to two decimal places. Okay, so we got to write our answer two different ways. We know that there's a total of 53. 24 out of 53, which as a decimal, 0 0.45. Now there's more to it, but it rounds. So I'm going to say it's approximately 0 0.45. Find the empirical probability that a person selected random from this group would not prefer soda A. Not. So that means, gee, there's 18 that prefer it. So I'm going to do 53 minus 18 to get the answer really quick over 53. That's all minus the part over all for a not answer. And when we do the arithmetic, thirty five over fifty three, which is rounded sixty six hundreds. Okay, that was quick and easy. You can do the next two pages for homework. Remember, if you don't understand anything, just ask me in class or during study hall. Thanks a lot. This is Mr. Price signing out. Probably. Am I gone yet? Not yet. Probably not. Yep. Gone.